And I feel as if she's being forced upon our culture, like it's this Taylor Swift yes. co colonizing yes. effort. I'm not a Taylor Swift fan. She's a narcissist. I don't think that she's very talented. Here, she's just, nasty. No, she's was, ugly. I, 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 nobody I likes really, her. She does, does Taylor, nobody likes her. She's like a teenage boy. The morning after like this dudes don't <laughs> like her. No. Like if you put her in front <laughs> of like, she's ugly. That's true. Yeah. yeah. Is, does Taylor Swift have any eggs left? Very normal. <laughs> he, just, he just asked, <laughs> does Taylor Swift have any eggs left? Bro. What is wrong with you? Who thinks about these kind of things? And I'm sorry, she's ugly. She looks like a teenage boy. What is wrong with these conservatives? Holy shit. I don't even know how to process this. Just demented, genuinely demented. So that was a clip from an October episode of Charlie Kirk and Jack Posobiec's thought crime podcast that was shared by the Midas Touch Network. And that bizarre Taylor Swift rant went on for a very long time. In fact, the Midas Touch estimates that it lasted for nearly 25 fucking minutes. Now, if Taylor Swift isn't your cup of tea, that's fine. She's not above criticism. I personally like Taylor Swift. But the way that they're criticizing her is not reasonable it's creepy it's downright explicitly misogynistic and uh i don't even know how to process what we just watched but there's more of it so we're gonna watch about three minutes of it and as you're gonna see it's gonna become clear why they hate her so much uh, her body count will have a museum and galleria dedicated to it at the end of her career i would take free britney crazy free britney over liar Taylor Swift who sets up her whole life where she's not like a real person and she's leading an army of women over a cliff against all of us. See, I totally understand her. She understands me. I love Taylor Swift. She does it. She makes money off of you. She she does she make an hates you. She, she doesn't dress well at all. I mean, she dresses like super revealing. What what is virtuous about her for young women to glean? Like date as many men as possible, complain all the time, ruin men's lives. She's not, she hasn't started a family. She's yeah, in her I mean, mid thirties. No kids. Like it's a she terrible role model. Four. Three up. If you, young women start dressing sluttier because of Taylor Swift, which makes their life miserable. Like when women dress like this, I, I don't, I don't know if a hundred percent. I'm telling you, it's like I don't under like why are you dressing like that, Taylor Swift? I think it's worse. You're that, dressed like a stripper. That's not the issue. The issue with Taylor Swift is that she makes women hate every everyone like I, literally everything and everyone like all of her like the the empowerment thing against the audience you go to one of her concerts it's not like a family friendly it's a it's a strictly w female you get a cult cult yeah it's a cult that's what it is there's no men that really enjoy taylor swift they just don't men fake enjoying taylor swift in There's order no men to impress women. Taylor Swift. That's correct. Taylor Swift is a l major reason why so many women are angry in America. There's more women that enjoy yes. the Chicago Bears game than yes, men that enjoy no Taylor Swift. Redemption. She's a bad role model. She's not a good person. Of She's a bad icon. Let's also remind you, her politics Big are time. cancerous. Her politics are poison. She doesn't do the stuff that a political true believer yeah, but would she really just do. Did something. She got she is, four million girls registered in like twenty four hours. Yeah, you see that? She but broke the website. That's the thing. It's so easy She's for her to do that. The country. She just there. You have the biggest. Hey, I would respect her. But she, so she's not leading people to God. She's leaving them the wokeism, complaining on boyfriends, man hating, and she used to be a Christian. Az says, I don't think this. Taylor is a Christian anymore. She grew up on a Christmas tea farm, tree farm. Yeah, I rest my case. Someone who like turns away from the faith and like pursues money, fame, and approval of the world. It, it, Good luck in eternity, Taylor. It's over under. How long until uh, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey are no more? Over under, Blake. Like until they're dead? I, I could see their suicide no, pact no, taking no, effect. No, not that one. Not oh. when the mRNA gene altering shot makes Travis Kelsey drop in the middle of practice. That one's I'm, way more fun. I'm talking about when will they no longer be together? I don't think they're together now. I think this is all a psyop. What, what's the goal of the psyop? World totally domination. agree, Blake. Do you, you agree, Jake, totally agree Jack? Totally agree, that, that just to make yeah. money? I, mean, I think she's an, I mean, she's very alien-esque. I mean, just look at how she functions. <laughs> I apologize for the amount of brain cells you lost by enduring that idiocy. Like, I'm speechless, honestly. As a political commentator myself, I'm speechless. I don't know what to say. I mean, they talked about her being bitter... That's a little bit of projection. Her body count. Uh, 
how about you just mind your own business and shut the fuck up? How about that? Why do you feel entitled to know her body count? Mind your own business. Now, two of them think that her relationship with Travis Kelsey is a psyop. And even Charlie Kirk, perhaps the dumbest one there, didn't even seem convinced because it begs the question, what is the point of the psyop in this instance? What agenda does that serve? Why would they pretend to date each other for some reason? These people are so stupid. Holy shit. Goddamn. Like, they look like a bunch of angry, sexually frustrated incels. And this is why people hate conservatives. I'm sorry. <laughs> I still can't get over the first part. Does Taylor Swift even have any eggs? Bro, you are a fucking freak show. Now, Charlie Kirk in that clip explained his real beef with, with Taylor Swift. So he says that she got 4 million girls registered to vote in 24 hours. She's going to destroy our country. There it is, right there. It always comes back to politics. It's not just that she's culturally influential, which scares them, but that cultural influence comes with political influence, and her wielding it is what really scares them, because if she actually chose to get more directly involved in politics, she could actually make a significant difference, especially in swing states, for example. Now, that clip was from October, but conservatives' creepy obsession with Taylor Swift hasn't stopped since then. And as the New Republic reports, conservatives are once again being very weird about Taylor Swift, and this comes after she was named Person of the Year by Time magazine. And they point to numerous examples of this. Jack Posobiec, who was part of that podcast, again, bashing Taylor Swift, saying, the Taylor Swift girl boss, Cy op has been fully activated from her hand selected vaccine shill boyfriend to her dink lifestyle which for those who don't know stands for dual income no kids i had to look that up uh, to her upcoming 2024 voter operation for democrats on abortion rights it's all coming he adds here is taylor swift a northeasterner from pennsylvania pretending to cry and attacking republicans claiming they don't stand for tennessee christian values the day the op was born now white supremacist stephen miller also chimed in saying what's happening with taylor swift is not organic notice how literally everything has to be a conspiracy theory to conservatives it can't just be that they don't like her and they leave it at that there has to be some additional layer there where she's actually an op for some specific political reason and this is all nefarious nefarious her being popular some nefarious plot by democrats it all amounts to them coping and seething about the fact that conservative celebrities just don't have the cultural clout or relevance that liberal and progressive celebrities do and they hate this because it makes them feel not only left out but it also is a missed opportunity because they probably would love to weaponize the clout of someone like taylor swift or beyonce but they can't because no celebrity is even close to that level of cultural influence. I mean, who do they have? The guy who played Superman and Lois and Clark and Hercules, I forgot his name. The Dilbert creator, like that's their celebrities. Now, Trump's attorney, Jeffrey Clark, basically admitted this. This is what happens when we cede culture to the left. Brainless youth raising themselves on Taylor Swift's saccharine bland music and that washing over into the serious world of politics. If we reach the point where Dwayne The Rock Johnson and Taylor Swift run for office together, we will truly have reached full on idiocracy where Mike Judge imagined President Dwayne Elizondo Mountain Dew Herbert Camacho. My brother and Christ, you support Donald Trump. Idiocracy was about you. Mike Judge literally said that Trump makes idiocracy look optimistic and also argued that Trump actually makes President Camacho look pleasant in comparison. So they are thirsty for cultural relevance, but they have none because they are hateful and bitter, and that toxicity isn't going to make them likable right? It's why we all dread Thanksgivings because our conservative uncles say the same shit that they were saying in that clip. Who wants to be around that, right? Nobody wants to deal with that. It's why we don't like you. It's why you don't have this influence culturally and socially. But this conservative animosity towards Taylor Swift represents a broader issue with conservative men in general that I think in part contributes to this loneliness phenomenon that they in particular are experiencing. 
And rather than instilling good values into their listeners, Charlie Kirk and his ilk are instead cultivating misogynistic attitudes towards women among his younger male audience. And that sexism is a huge turnoff to most women, which then makes them less dateable and subsequently compounds the issue of loneliness. And this isn't conjecture. Data actually shows that young conservative men in particular are struggling on the dating scene because liberal women don't want to date them. And this Washington Post editorial suggests that this political Political mismatch will actually threaten the institution of marriage itself if women don't drop this standard. But as the salon response to that op-ed points out, it is wrong to suggest that women are the ones in the wrong here. They're not wrong for having higher standards. Conservatives are wrong for being toxic and sexist. Amanda Marcotte argues the op-ed presents as if this entreated to date across party lines, as if it's generalized advice being offered to both men and women and both Republicans and Democrats. But of course, course, it's aimed primarily, if not exclusively, at Democratic voting women. The polling data shows that most Republicans are already willing to date Democrats, which makes sense since Democrats make more attractive partners. It's mostly Democrats and mostly women who decline to date those from the other party. In trying to sell women on this marry men who repulse you plan, the editorial board unconvincingly argues that simply being married makes people happier than being single. But while it may be true that married people, even those in politically mixed marriages, report higher levels of happiness than single people, it doesn't follow that the wedding ring is the reason. Most Americans marry for love, after all. Being married to someone you wanted to marry is very different than what is being suggested here. Lowering your standards just to get married. But of course, women's happiness is not actually the concern of the Washington Post editorial board. The more serious argument comes from their insistence that cross-political marriages will help save the nation from the Trump-era divisions and social ills stemming from men's misogyny. Basically, it's a gussied up version of the classic Beauty and the Beast fantasy where a woman's love can turn the brute into a prince. It's cruel on its face to expect women to give up their own happiness in hopes they can turn a red hat into a better man through patience and love, but it's also a false hope. It's hard enough to get anyone to change their minds about politics. Trying to get men who already think women are inferior to listen to their liberal wives is a joke. And that's exactly right. Nobody wants to date somebody who thinks they're superior or thinks that you're inferior or who's overly superficial and hyper fixated on body counts or some dumb bullshit like that. It's weird and it's understandable that women would be turned off by that. So what's the solution then? Well, the solution isn't to shame women into dating conservatives. The solution is to teach young conservative men that they need to respect women and view them as equals and actually value them. And conservative men conservative influencers like Charlie Kirk in particular should in theory be instilling these values in them but instead they are teaching young men the opposite they are teaching them to be toxic and hate women and treat them like shit and speculate about their body counts and stuff like that and to the extent that conservatives do have an impact on culture, that impact is toxic, as we've seen. But I mean, at the end of the day, regardless if their hatred of Taylor Swift stems from her political or cultural influence or downright horniness, it's just really fucking stupid and weird. And if conservatives are wondering why they're struggling to maintain any cultural relevance, that's why. It's because you say things like that that make you look like fucking freaks. Penis and balls, vagina. Penis and balls, vagina. P word and balls, vagina. P word and balls, vagina. Ass, gum. Ass, gum. Ass, gum. Vagina. She stroked my face with the vagina. She stroked my penis and balls.